Hello world, Julio here, and in today's video, we're going to be creating a responsive blog post type of card. As you can see, we have a nice image that goes with the heading. We have a date as well as a brief description, and finally, we have a read more button to lead to the article. Again, this will be fully responsive, so if we go to the responsive view and resize the window, you'll notice that the content will always adapt no matter what the width is. So if you guys want to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and turning on bell notifications. I post videos every Sunday. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you want the latest channel updates, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I also created a Patreon, so if you want to help support the channel, be sure to check that out. All the links are going to be in the description below. Now. Let's jump right in. So as you can see, I've already set up the basic structure for this project. That includes the index.html as well as the styles.css. I also have an images folder with one image. What we want to do next is go inside of the body and open up a div with the class of blog post. Inside of the blog post, we want to have another div with the class of blog post img. Then we want to have the image. It's going to be in the images folder, and then it's going to save um, post photo. Now we want to go underneath and create another div with the class of blog post info. This div is going to hold all the other information we have about the post. So the first thing I'll do now is create another div inside of it with the class of blog post date. And here we will have to span. The first one will just be for the day and the second one we'll read the month, the specific day, as well as the year. What we want to do now is go underneath of the date div and we're going to have an H1 with the class of blog post title. This will read shark sighting. Then we want to have a p tag with the class of blog post text. And in here, we want to play some dummy text. Finally, we can go underneath of the p tag and open up an anchor tag with the class of blog post CTA. It will not go anywhere, so we can just use a hash and then it will say read more. And this will be the basic structure of the HTML document. Now, what I'll do is just open it up in the browser so that we can see what we have so far. And here on the side, we have a very large image that we will take care of once we start doing the styles. So let me just make this smaller so that we can have them side by side. Now, join me in the CSS. As usual, we will start by doing a basic reset, but before we begin, let me just minimize this so that we have more room to work with. I'll select everything as well as everything for the before and after pseudo elements. And what I want to do now is do a basic reset of the margin padding, and then I'll set the box sizing to border box. Next, I'll select the HTML document and I'll set a font family of Roboto. Keep in mind that I have this font installed in my computer, which is why I'm not using any link to bring it in. Then I'll have a font size of 10 pixels. To quickly fix the image, I'll select all the images and I'll give it a width of 100% for now. Then I'll select the body. 
I will give it a width of 100%, then a height of 100 of the pupil height. Keep in mind that I'm only applying these styles to the body because I want to showcase my card. If you were doing this for an actual project, you would have to accommodate for whatever the container was. Then I'll make it a flex container because I want to center the card in the middle. Then I'll do align items of center and justify content of center. What I want to do next is give it a background color and then some padding left and right. Next, I'll select the blog post. This will have a width of 100% and it will also have a max width of 98 rem. I'm also going to give it padding all around of 5 rem and the background color is going to be white. Then I'll do a box shadow. And the blur is going to be blur spread 8 rem and an RGBA. And this should be the box shadow, not sizing. It's going to be 0, 0, 0 with an alpha of 0.2. I'm also going to make this a flex container and then I'll do an ally items of center followed by a border radius of 0.8 rem just so that we can get those rounded corners. What I want to do now is select the blog post IMG div and in here I will do a min width of 35 rem because I want the image to always be as big as 35 rems. I don't want it to get any smaller than that. However, I also want to do a max width of 35 rem as well because I don't want it to get any bigger than that. Next, I'll give it a height of 30 rem. Then I'll do a transform translate and it's going to be on the Y, actually the X, and it's going to be negative 8 rem. And that's just going to push it so that it overlaps. I'm going to give it a position of relative as well because we'll need it later on for the pseudo element. Now I'll select the image inside of it. This will have a width of 100%. It will also have a height of 100%. And I'm going to set the object fit to cover. Then what I'll do is give it a display of block and I'll give it the same border radius of 0.8 rem. Once we do that we can go ahead and select the block post IMG again and we can do the before pseudo element. This will also have a width of 100% a height of 100%, the position will be set to absolute, top to zero, and left to zero. We will use this for the gradient overlay. So for that, we can just say background, and then linear gradient, and it's going to have the following values. To right, and then an RGBA of 78, actually 79, then 172, 254, and then an alpha of 0.8 rem. We're going to separate it with a comma. And then we can say again RGBA. And it's going to have a serial as the first value. Then 242, 254. And then again, the alpha, it's going to be 0.8. Then we can go ahead underneath and create another box shadow. So box shadow, 0.5 rem, then it's going to be 3 rem, and then here I can just do 1 pixel, or GBA, and I'll say 
let's make it really subtle. So I'll do 0 0.05. I also want to apply the same rounded corners. So I'll do a border radius of 0.8 rem as well. Now we can move down to style the spans we have right here. But before we move on, let's see how it looks so far. And if you ask me, it looks pretty good. So now we can just go ahead and select the block post date span. And we can say that display will be set to block because as you can see right now, they're like right next to each other. But once we give it a display of block, they're gonna be on top of each other. The color is going to be an RGVA of 0, 0, 0, and then the alpha will be 0.5. I can do a font size of 1.4 rem. Actually, I'll do 0.6. Then I'll say that the font weight is going to be 600. And then I'll give it a margin top and bottom of 0.5 rem. And then zero left and right. Now we can move down and style the title. The title will have a font size of 2.5 rem. Then I'll do a margin top of 1.5 rem and then zero left and right, and then we can do two rim for the bottom. The text will be set to uppercase, and then the color is going to be, it's going to be this, this one right here that we use for the RGBA, but we're going to use the hex code for it. So 4F, AC, and then FE. And that's going to be pretty much it for the title. And as you guys can see, it's already taken shape. Next, what I want to do is style the text or the P tag in this case. This will have a margin bottom and it's gonna be set to three rem. The font size is going to be set to 1.4 rem. Finally, the color it's again going to be an RGBA and it's going to set the alpha 2.7. Next, we can style the button. So we can say block post CTA. We want to make sure that we give it a display of inline block. Now we can also give it a background color. Actually, before we give it the background color, I'll give it padding top and bottom of 1.5 rem and then three rem left and right. Then we can go ahead and say that the letter spacing will be set to one pixel. The text is going to be set to transform uppercase. The font size will be 1.2 rem and the color is going to be set to white. I also want to give it a border radius, but I'll do that after I apply the background. So the background color is going to be, actually it's going to be a background image since we are using a linear gradient. So here we can say that it's going to be to right. The hex value is going to be this blue at 0%. And then the next value is going to be of 0, 0, and then F2, FE. And this one will be 100%. Now I can do the border radius of 0.8 rem. Finally, what we want to do next is just create a hover effect for it. So what we want to do is just reverse the color we have here. Let's also not forget to get rid of the text decoration by setting it to none. So CTA, then we can do hover. We can basically just grab this right here, paste it down below, 
And what we want to do is just reverse this. So this color is going to be here. And this color, we will move to here. And let's just separate this. So now when we hover over the button, the colors are inverted. So the next thing for us to do is to write some media queries. So we can say add media, and then screen, and we can say max width. The first breakpoint is going to be at 1068. And in here, we just want to select the blog post. And we want to make the max width smaller. We can say 80 rem. Then what we want to do is select the blog post IMG. And we want to switch the min width to 30 rem, as well as the max width to 30 rem to make it slightly smaller. And that's going to be pretty much it for the break, uh, first breakpoint. What we want to do next is select this media query and paste it down below. Now we can do the next breakpoint, which is going to be 868. So we can just modify that value. The black post, as far as like the size, is going to stay the same. So we can just delete this. But what we want to do is just reduce the padding. So we can say that the padding is going to be 2.5 rem, and we want to make sure that we switch the flex direction to column because we no longer want it to be side by side. And as you can see, that already looks a lot better. Next, what we want to do is just replace these values because we want the image now to be bigger. We can say it's going to span over 100% and the max width is going to be 100% as well. We also want to remove the translate X here and we want to translate it on the Y now. So transform translate. We can set the, the X to zero and now we can do the same negative eight for the Y. And now it's overlapping up top. Finally, we have one last breakpoint. So again, I'll copy the media query, paste it down below, and then we can modify it to be six, um, 768. And what we want to do here is pretty simple as well. What we want to do next, actually, now that I think about it, for this breakpoint right here, we can just keep what we have and we'll just paste it at the one with the 768. And then we can just delete this because what I want to do here is actually make the blog post slightly smaller. So let me just change the max width to 70 rem instead. And this one can stay as it is right now because those are the values we need for the last breakpoint. So with all that being done, we can now go ahead and check how it looks. So when we do the responsive view, you guys can see that the card is reacting to the screen's width. So with that being said, the project is now completed. So again, if you guys found this video useful, you learned something new, please be sure to subscribe if you already haven't. Give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one.